Meeting to order. Uh, we are convening from closed session. Would you please report to the attorney? Yeah. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council members. Council is in closed session this evening. Conference of legal counsel anticipated litigation. There's no action to report on that item. The second item, public employee performance evaluation. The council will be reconvening to closed session after the regular city council meeting. Thank you. Roll call, please. Council member Powers? Here. Council member Singleton? Here. Council member Shelton? Here. Council member Cruz? Here. Council member Payne? Present. At this time, I would ask you to join me in a moment of silent prayer. That will be followed by the flag salute by PAC 84 Cub Scouts. We blow two, then 10. Clerk, guard attention. On it, please read. Scout salute. Those not in uniform, please place your right hand on your heart. Clerk, guard forward march. Clerk, guard halt. Clerk, guard cross the colors. Guard post the colors. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Two. Public guard, return to rank. Audience, please be seated. I had wanted to mention and fail to do so that our prayers are with our own Inez Carey, who recently lost her husband. Um, it was not expected, so more than ever, uh, we want to keep her in our thoughts and our prayers. With that, I would ask for the video statement to be read, please. This meeting of the Gulf City Council is being videotaped in its entirety and will be con cable cast without interruption on Metro Cable 14, the Government Affairs Channel, on the Comcast and SureWest cable systems. Tonight's meeting can be seen on Channel 14 and will also be webcast at www.factmetrocable.tv this Friday and Saturday at 9 a.m. Tonight's meeting can also be seen via live video streaming on the city's website at www.ci.galt.ca.us. A DVD copy is also available for checkout from any library branch. Members of the audience wishing to address council should fill out a speaker identification form and give it to the clerk. Please speak into the microphone when addressing council and state your name for the record. Thank you. At this time, I would ask for agenda approval. Are there any additions or deletions? I would like to, on the uh, consent calendar, pull item E4. E4 has been pulled for mm -hmm. discussion. We have no presentations, so we will go to public comment. Under Government Code Section 54954.3, members of the public may address the council on non-agenda items. Speakers may address council on any agenda item during consideration of the item. Speakers shall restrict their comments to issues that are within the subject jurisdiction of the City Council and limit comments to a maximum of three minutes. 
Please fill out a speaker sheet located on the table inside the entrances to the council chambers and forward the completed speaker sheet to the clerk. Okay. And I have um, one right now. Uh, Patrick O'Flattery, public comment on time limits, please. Uh, good evening, council members. Um, the issue I wanted to address with you tonight uh, is the public uh, speaking time limits here at, uh, at council, which um, were originally five minutes and then about a year and a half ago, I think that uh, they were reduced to a three minute period. Um, the reason I thought it would be timely and appropriate to bring uh, this to the council's attention was because approximately two weeks ago, um, Ms. May Ma Madam Mayor, you had the pleasure of addressing a forum uh, here in town with the uh, other candidates running for council that they gave you a two-minute period to respond to questions to. Um, and I note that not only you, uh, also um, Vice Mayor Powers and Council Member Cruz were in attendance that evening, and all of you will probably have a pretty good recollection, especially you, Ms. Mrs. Mayor, that the uh, Time limits really didn't afford you the opportunity to complete any of the responses that you had. Um, and although you graciously and candidly passed the, uh, the microphone at the end of your two-minute period, um, it did leave you, I'm sure, um, disappointed that you weren't able to complete your thought processes and um, enlighten everybody as to your full intent and comments. Um, that not only applies to you, but it obviously applies to every other uh, candidate that was up there that night. And um, exponentially, it applies to all of us that come before the council on a periodic basis to address the council. Um, the, the council repeatedly, all of you folks, um, state to us that you want to be the voice of the people and you want to hear what the people have to say. And so I would just uh, respectfully ask that the next time that you folks all meet together uh, privately that you address this uh, issue and reconsider reinstating the original five-minute period so that everybody is able to feel a little more comfortable because, um, you know, you obviously have learned, um, as I've repeatedly come to the uh, podium up here, that, you know, an Irishman has a hard time fitting his time into a three-minute period and stuff, but there are a lot of people that are subsequently and consequently intimidated by the fact that they're facing a clock. Um, so an extra couple of minutes does help somebody regroup. So if you would, thanks very much for your time. Thank you for your comments. Are there other at this time? Mr. Flattery, you want to speak on the item of animal co code when it comes up? Okay. Okay. <coughs> then we can read the consent calendar, please. Item one, City of Galt Warrant. Item two, loan agreement between the City of Galt and the successor agency of the Galt Redevelopment Agency. Item three, Marion O. Lawrence Library Lease Renewal. Item five, ordinance number 2012-10, amending district zoning map of the City of Galt. And item E4 was pulled for discussion. Do you want to do that at this time? Yes, please. Uh, I thought it was such an important issue, especially the FEMA portion of it, that the public be aware of what exactly it was, at least give us a, a synopsis of what we're actually dealing with. Madam Mayor and Councilmember Cruz, I'd be happy to give you a brief overview and then uh, entertain additional questions. Uh, item E4 is a um, recommendation to adopt the um, Sacramento County Local Hazard Mitigation Plan. That is a plan that uh, is prepared and updated once every five years uh, by the jurisdictions within the region, coordinated by the county as lead agency. Uh, it is a requirement um, that FEMA has uh, that uh, jurisdictions have a plan in place um, uh, to be eligible for hazard mitigation or pre-hazard or pre-disaster hazard mitigation grants that from time to time the federal government makes available through FEMA or the Corps of Engineers. Um, by having this plan in place, uh, uh, it, it says that we 
are part of the region and recognize that we face both some regional threats as well as some specific local natural hazards uh, to the community. In fact, the plan outlines 19 potential hazards uh, that we face. Of those, 12 are considered to be low risk or low significance, things that are either so rare or if they did occur would not necessarily cause major disruption that they've sort of been uh, categorized as a, a minimal or low risk. There are, however, um, six uh, categories of risk that are, that are indicated to be medium hazard, meaning that uh, even though they might be rare, that if they happen, they could cause disruption to the community uh, or threaten the health and safety of the community. Uh, and then one item was deemed to be of high significance in terms of either the frequency or the amount of uh, damage or devastation that could be caused, and that high category was the potential for flooding. And even though the city has very limited uh, potential 100-year flood uh, plain hazards. In fact, you'll be hearing a report here in the next few months uh, on uh, FEMA has issued uh, new and updated uh, flood insurance rate maps for the city uh, and uh, only very slight portions uh, next to Dry Creek and Dead Man's Gulch are impacted and uh, very few existing uh, developed areas are, are impacted by that. But even so, if there was a flood and that were proximal to the delta of the Cosumnes River uh, and the, the noted local streams, um, Flooding can have a devastating effect, so for that reason it was given a high significance rating in the plan. Maybe I close with the thought that um, it is a regional hazard evaluation, but each of the jurisdictions that assign on to the plan um, do have their own appendix section within, and uh, uh, the, the section that uh, applies specifically to GALT uh, was uh, developed through participation of county staff uh, over the last year and a half uh, meeting with regional representatives in the county uh, to come up with this and uh, we would recommend that we adopt it. It is not mandatory that we do anything with the plan or implement any specific features of the plan. Uh, it does, however, make us eligible for future grants that may become available. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, would you like to move the motion? Thank you. We've had a motion okay. and a second. Roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Powers? Aye. Council Member Singleton? Aye. Council Member Shelton? Aye. Council Member Cruz? Aye. Uh, Mayor Payne? Aye. Uh, motion passed unanimously. Is there um, any other discussion on the consent calendar? If not, I would entertain the motion to accept motion the remainder. Motion approved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Thank you. Roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Powers? Aye. Council Member Singleton? Aye. Council Member Shelton? Aye. Council Member Cruz? Aye. Mayor Payne. Aye. Motion passed unanimously. Next item, please. Scheduled matters. Subject, adoption by reference of Title VIII of the Sacramento County Code regarding animals. Uh, good evening again, Mayor and Council Members. This item was first presented to the Council at the second meeting of September, and the ordinance uh, presented to you this evening was introduced at that meeting. Uh, we're back this evening for the purpose of conducting a public hearing on this proposed ordinance and then for consideration of adoption. Uh, as I indicated at the last uh, meeting where this was discussed, the Galt Municipal Code provisions relating to animal control and licensing were last amended in 1970 and at that time we incorporated a county ordinance that was adopted in 1969 and um, the county has updated their ordinance several times since then and the purpose of the current ordinance before you is to incorporate by reference uh, the current version of the county code relating to animal control, which is Title VIII. Uh, we do contract with the county for animal control, and as a practical matter, it's easier for animal control officers to know from uh, jurisdiction to jurisdiction what the, what the rules are. Uh, in reality, I would hazard a guess that they are not enforcing in Galt the 1969 ordinance. For example, it, in, it contains a fee if, you're, if your dog is uh, impounded and you go to collect your dog from the uh, Sacramento County facility at the charges, at least in 1969, the charge was $5. And regardless of, of where the dog is, uh, dogs come from that are uh, impounded at that facility, everybody pays the, the current fee. So um, by adopting this uh, updated version of the county code, I think in, enforcement becomes a little bit easier within our community, and in fact, it more accurately, accurately reflects 
the laws that the animal control officers are in fact uh, applying within our community. So with that, I'd be happy to uh, answer any uh, questions the council has. Again, uh, the first item after, uh, after addressing any questions is to conduct a uh, public hearing, and then after the public hearing to consider adoption of the ordinance. With the consent of the talent of the council, I would um, open the public hearing and then we can have discussion after that. So I will open the public hearing and I believe we do have a, a someone that wants to speak. Patrick O'Flaherty. Thank you, council members. Um, with regards to the statement that um, Mr. Rudolph just made, um, I would venture to advise the council and inform you that not only has the, the animal control department down off of Bradshaw Road there um, failed to enforce the 1969 policies, but also the 2009 updated policies uh, here in the city of Gaul. Um, it's the intention, I take it, by virtue of adopting this resolution that you're going to incorporate Section 8 as the new applicable codes that would be enforced here within the city. <clears throat> if you were perchance, and we addressed this last, uh, last month, um, and the chief responded to the fact that if you have an at-large dog that does present a safety hazard, an immediate safety hazard, first and foremost, Galt PD will respond and act accordingly to detain or deter any harm to the public. If you have at-large dogs, barking dogs, any sort of public nuisance, anything that poses a safety hazard, possibly not to an immediate uh, citizen in the form of a bite or anything like that, but running into traffic, causing a traffic accident, anything like that, if you venture to make a call to the Bradshaw facility, they will tell you that their response time is approximately 24 to 48 hours which is absolutely inefficient and does not meet the needs of the community here in Gulf. Secondly, if you call the police department now uh, with complaints of barking dogs, which is a notorious thing that will reappear week after week in the crime report, or it used to anyway, the direction from the dispatch now is to call animal control. Animal control will now tell you that they no longer even have the manpower to send a letter to the offending dog owner to tell them to deter this public nuisance. Accordingly, if you're going to take and adopt this code section, Section 8, into the Galt City Code, I, it's, I know you don't answer questions, but my impression here is that this is going to fall to Rusty to it becomes part of the code section and Rusty is the code enforcement officer Will Rusty, in turn, be the person that has to come out and deal with an at-large dog or a barking dog or any of these kind of issues that are perpetual nuisance or safety hazard within the city? And so I ask you folks to take that into consideration. Maybe Mr. Rudolph could address that issue um, when he gets around to having a discussion with you folks uh, on, on what's the in local enforcement issue going to be aside from the immediate immediate and you know high public threat issue. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. You did it. good question. Were there any others? No. Uh, so I will close the public hearing and I will um, leave this open to council and city manager. Did you want to respond or yeah, I was just gonna say the the enforcement of this um, to the extent that, that county animal control is not able to respond in a efficient manner does fall to the police department, not to our code enforcement officer. So when it comes to barking dogs and vicious dogs and anything relating to animal control that we don't think uh, we're getting adequate response from, from the county, um, it would fall to our, our police department. And um, I'd like the, the chief to respond to how we are handling barking dog requests right now or complaints. Well, it appears that I have to, in fact, uh, find out if that's what this is telling us. We actually are supposed to be responding to bars and dogs. We actually have a form that we put on the door that says that, in fact, we've been there on a complaint as far as barking dogs, so that, in fact, they're at notice that we have, in fact, done this. So, that was my understanding is that we were responding to right. barking dogs and 
losing not notification. So if the dispatchers are telling the public something other than that, then we'll certainly look into that and find out where the miscommunication is. Okay. Thank you. Council, any questions or? You just answered my question, so I'm good. Well, I just have something to say, and it's just that we're, unfortunately, with all kinds of budget cuts and everything, we're stuck between a rock and a hard place. You know, I really wish we had more animal control going out here. We don't even make sure that they get licensed. We don't charge anybody for not spaying and neutering. It's because, you know, we're a small town and we have to um, contract it out. I, I would hope that one of these days we could be in charge of our own destination where the animals are concerned in our town. It's just not happening right now. And um, the bummer is, too, that in order you know, we have to adopt, like if you contract out to anybody, you got to get, they give you a contract and tell you what they're going to do for us. So we do have to adopt what their rules are because in, we're contracting them out. Right. So, uh, you know, I, we've talked about it before and I'm, I share the same concerns you do. We have so many dogs walking the streets and so much going on that I really hope that someday sooner than later we can get to where we control our own destiny with this kind of stuff, but we can't right now with the yeah. way yeah. the and economy is. Regardless of the, the level of service, uh, we are getting services provided by the county. Chief, do you remember how many times Sac County Animal Control responded in the city of Galt? 360 something. Yeah. In, in last year? Mm -hmm. 300. So, you know, they're, they're down here quite often responding to issues, whether it's as timely as people would like is certainly debatable. Um, but they are down here um, providing the service that we contract for and what we what we can afford. And I have had uh, the police, uh, one night I had a problem with the dog roaming the streets and they took care of that for me. Yeah. And I have had trouble with barking dogs also. And I have seen that there are, um, there's something putting on, on the homeowner's house. You, you can't happen more than three times. So. We're doing what we can, I think we can say. Yeah. Right. I have heard that um, a citizen can make an arrest on, like if they have a neighbor who's continually barking and creating a problem, that a citizen, whether they may want to or not, has that ability to do a citizen's arrest. They can, they can actually sign a citation, which yeah. is what's been known as far as the citizen's arrest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I think uh, there's some action, there's a process that follows that if, if That's someone. Right. If in fact the person does that, uh, they're required to appear in court on how many of the times that the case comes up to be able to testify regarding uh, their evidence regarding the barking dog, what they might have, writing um, down and documenting when the dog was barking. Some people, in fact, if they report it, they'd be required to appear in court. That would be, in fact, their citation, their arrest, and we are the ones who actually hand it over to the individual. So that is an option, whether it be desirable or not, but that is something that, that you can do. Any other discussion? Would you, again, read the recommended action after all this discussion? One is conduct a public hearing. Two, adopt ordinance number 2012-09, repealing and replacing chapter 6.04 of the Galt Municipal Code regarding animals, and adopting by reference Title 8 of the Sacramento County Code, animals. Okay, thank you. You've heard the recommended action, and after discussion, is there a motion on this item? Motion to approve, mm -hmm. that's submitted. I do. We have a um, motion. Is there a second? Second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Powers. This is my reluctant eye from last time and this time. But, um. Council Member Singleton. Aye. Council Member Shelton. Aye. Council Member Cruz. Aye. Mayor Payne. Aye. Motion passed unanimously. Um, next item, please. It will be the strategic plan. Okay. As you may have heard in the past, uh, the city council as well as the staff, the department heads and city manager meet periodically to um, determine their goals for the future. And then we review these goals to be sure we're making some progress. Tonight we're going to review a few of them. We won't review all of them, but we have selected some. Um, you want to 
go to the first one. And again, these are all on the website, updated, so if people want to see all the goals and the progress, they can go on the website and learn more. So this three-year goal is enhance economic development, and item three, I believe, um, I can't read that very well from here. City manager. Yeah, I can't read the, uh, the what. Would you like to, um, now I'm going to let the city manager read it. <laughs> it's his. Okay. Item number three is present to the city council possible negotiated terms with CBS Outdoors with funding of, of an electronic city sign on Highway 99. And we are engaged in negotiations currently with CBS Outdoors. We um, believe we've negotiated most of the, the major terms and we hope to be able to present a uh, agreement to the city council um, probably within the next uh, month or two. So things are going well. I don't know. Okay, the next one is improve financial stability and maintenance of reserves. And let me see if I can locate mine. This is upside down and backwards. That's okay, I need to see this. There we go. Sorry, well, I'm. I'd be happy to read it. Would you like me to read <laughs> these for you? Uh, yeah, please okay. do. A um, couple of them are highlighted here. The first one is item number three, which is uh, submit the redevelopment agency successor agency audit to the Department of Finance for housing per AB 1484. This is a requirement uh, that was imposed for AB 1484 that we do conduct a due diligence review. We hired Mason Associates several months ago to conduct this. It's actually on the agenda uh, later on this evening under the successor agency. So for this for the uh, successor agency submittal to the oversight board. There will be an oversight board meeting on October 25th to hold a public meeting, public hearing, and then a final adoption of that will be November 8th. It will be submitted to the Department of Finance. So we're on track to get that uh, completed and require in the, to the requirements necessary for Department of Finance. Okay, thank you. Do you want to continue? Yep, yep. next one is um, having studied the feasibility of refinancing outstanding bonds, make a recommendation to the City Council for action. Um, this is on target. We've had uh, several meetings with uh, um, advisors and bond council to see, take a look at all the city's outstanding bonds to see if it would make sense to refinance with the uh, with the low interest rates that we're experiencing right now, whether it makes sense to, to take a look at some of those. And we believe that there are a few that we're going to make some recommendations recommendations to the city council um, probably next month or December at the latest, so that we can get some cost savings for the city potentially some of the, the residents through through um, the assessments that are on various property taxes across the city. So we're we're looking forward to presenting those recommendations to the city council shortly. Okay, thank you. Let's continue. Is this the next one? Mm -hmm. I'm kind of lost with this. Provide services and facilities that are responsive to community needs. Okay, the next, this was item number two, and yeah. this is Police Chief and Councilmember Singleton and the Special Projects Administrator to recommend to the Public Safety Committee and to the City Council for Action City Programs for At-Risk Youth. I don't know if the Councilmember Singleton would like to report on that or the Chief would like to report. Yeah, um, we had a meeting, thank you, uh, Mr. Bearman, last Tuesday uh, at the police station with uh, uh, Chief Owen. Um, uh, the lieutenants were there. Uh, Armando Solis was there. Um, we had a, a few officers there also. So we're trying to put all our heads together and try to figure out how we're going to get this program going. Uh, that was one of the main concerns we discussed was um, startup costs, where we're going to be able to uh, have this program. Uh, from all the staff that was there, they seemed very passionate about getting this going and helping the at-risk youth, and, and I'm very passionate about that. Um, so I think we have a good start. Uh, the, the only problem is, again, funding. Uh, we want to try to make sure that we're self-sufficient and that it's going to do our youth uh, good and have the outlook, uh, have a great outlook for the youth that are going to be in the program. Uh, we're trying to find out what kind of sports the kids are interested in. Um, 
so I think I don't remember if we discussed uh, talking to some kids. Uh, Chief, um, yes, that was that was a discussion, and uh, our SRO Sylvia Suello oh, right. was yeah. going to contact the Fort Salt High and see what we could do for some of the older individuals. Uh, we have some uh, current programs through the Parks and Recreation Department with Armando Solis. And uh, we thought that we could just expand those programs, but look at some of the other things that some of the older kids might be in interested in. Right. Um, and, and the other thing we're looking at is instead of punishing these kids all the time, saying you're bad, 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 because we're trying to show that we care about these kids, we want to mentor these kids. Yeah, they make mistakes. We want to show them that they can change and turn around and, and do the right thing instead of being a liability to the city. You're, going to be an asset and uh, and one of the other main things that I and I think Chief Bowen can attest to is that we need parents to get involved that's one of the main backbones of one of these programs is to have parents involved um, maybe an hour a month I mean we, we're not sure even how it's going to work but we need the involvement by parents and so I'll be pushing that as much as I can, and I'm sure Chief Bowen will. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Where are we now? Improve community involvement in two ways. Communication, um, schedule, plan, and host a ribbon cutting. Mm -hmm. yep. I think we did that. We did that. Uh, <laughs> and I see, um, is it your name there, Vice Mayor? You want to talk about yeah, that? I did so much help that I got that all I did was get the invitation and knew when it was happening. But it was really all of any of you that came out. It was really a very wonderful done event, Donna. You did a great job, a great, great job. And uh, we had a lot of people come out. I thought that was great. And uh, we got to drive in really old timey cars to be the first cars to go over the interchange, and it was really very nice event, very well attended, and a very happy occasion, which was really nice. And we had some guests. We had uh, Congressman Van Lundgren and Supervisor Don Natoli. But I think the burning question is, City Manager, when is it really going to be open? <laughs> <laughs> um, as I stated uh, during some of the comments at the ribbon cutting, it's, um, it's going to be a phased opening. This week, uh, A Street is supposed to open. They're going to be doing some, they need to do some additional grinding and striping and some things. The big, the big work and the big opening is contingent on them getting all the signals operational. So most of the roadway work, the striping, all that stuff is, is essentially done with some minor. It's the, uh, the electrical work that still needs to be done. And you, I saw today that they had some of that the work going on. So I think we've been able to expedite some of that. So um, last I heard is we're shooting for the end of this month for kind of full opening. But, but that the A Street portion of it should be opening um, this week. Steve, do you have any other updates beyond that? Uh, that's correct. Uh, we're hoping that maybe as soon as tomorrow, A Street uh, to the west will be open. Uh, probably uh, to, uh, we will not be open the structure to proceed west. We still have to sort of do the, uh, the dog leg and go across on the C Street. Uh, but uh, as soon as we have signals, we'll be moving forward. And right now, uh, they're making good progress. If we don't have any glitches with testing out all the controllers, which all talk to each other. So we sort of platoon and phase vehicles through the split uh, intersection. Um, we we are very hopeful that we'll, within a couple of weeks, uh, I'm gonna, with any luck, by the time I get back from a quick vacation trip to Montana, that we'll have some of the signals up and running. We'll see. Would it work better if you didn't take your vacation? <laughs> faster? They've assured me that they'll work harder if I'm not here beating them than if I am. Okay. You could always do Skype once in a while, you know. <laughs> um, is that that? Okay, thank you for your report. Next item then. Under City Council's office, subject approval of Mayor Payne's requested use of her discretionary funds. Oh, that's me, huh? Okay, um, I have a couple of things I want to do with my bucks. And I want to do $500 to go to our Commission on Aging because they are a very vital part of our uh, community. They um, protect and look after our valuable senior citizens. And they need a little money to have some resources to put together um, a kind of a 
uh, manual type of thing. So uh, I would like the council to approve that. Do we need to do, I'm going to do two. Can do we need to get approval individually on each one? No, I think you can do them uh, jointly. Okay. Then the next item I just came up with the other day as a citizen made me walk A Street with her and look at um, people that walk their dogs that don't clean up behind them. Oh boy. And it was it was quite revealing and when you're driving down the street you don't know that but when you're walking along and you see piles of stuff like that it's not very inviting so um, the thing I would like to do is um, see if my last $500 could go towards a, like a station that has the little glove and a, a place where you can dispense what you pick up I think there's a lot of good citizens out there that are uh, responsible for looking after their dogs that maybe they just need to be reminded and maybe they think because there's no facility there that it's okay to not do that. So I'm not sure what it would cost. Uh, maybe we could get uh, Parks and Recs to look into that. So I would like to then, in recap, uh, give $500 to our Commission on Aging to work with and $500 towards a doggy cleanup station on A Street. And I'm hoping, I've heard the same complaint about Carillion, so I'm hoping somewhere, uh, maybe um, one of the service clubs or someone somewhere along the way will consider doing the same thing on Carillion. We'll get some cost estimates. I'm not sure what one of those stations costs. Um, I know there are, there are trash receptacles along Carillion. I'm not sure about A Street because you want to make sure you locate the trash receptacles. Mm -hmm near the, the station yeah. so people can dispose of it properly. Um, so we can get some cost estimates uh, for, for each one and then maybe give some, some idea of how many we think we would recommend putting $500. Unfortunately, it's probably not going to go um, as far as we need it to, to put, but we could certainly, that could, could be a start okay. to, to do that and then we can come back maybe later and let you know what it would take to put enough to cover all the major walking trails in the city and we can look at a future appropriation or another city council appropriation down the road. Or like you said, take a look at some of the service clubs and see if that's a project. Because I know we've had the Kiwanis, for example, they sponsored the, um, the doggy cleanup stations over at the dog parks. Um, and they actually resupply those with the bags and things like that on an ongoing basis. So if we can get some service clubs that want to take those on, uh, adopt a a what? I don't know. <laughs> a doggy rest doggy stop. Station. There you go. So we'll take a look at that. And okay, thank you. So I would like the council to approval to spend my money. Do, I, do we need a, a motion? Okay, we do have a motion. Thank you. Second. And a second. Roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Powers? Aye. Council Member Singleton? Aye. Council Member Shelton? Aye. Council Member Cruz? Aye. Mayor Ping? Aye. Motion passed unanimously, and thank you. Next item, under City Council Office, approval of Council Member Singleton's requested use of his discretionary funds. This is our night to spend money. Yeah, yeah it is. Turns out that way. Go ahead. Good evening again. Are you talking to me? Right? Yep. Okay. Wasn't sure. Okay. Handed yes, it over, sir. yet yes, you, were, sir. you were talking, so I wasn't sure if you were still handing it over to me. No, I don't know. It wasn't bother me. Uh, the first thing, $500 on law enforcement uh, trading cards. I'm not sure if... Uh, some of you should remember, a couple of years ago, our police officers used to carry around trading cards, and it gives stats on how long they've been on the department and interests and that kind of thing. And um, some officers have come to me and asked me if I would support something like that, and absolutely. Anytime our PD can uh, uh, give better PR to our community, especially little kids, because they look up to our officers, I want to support that. Uh, so I'd like to do $500 to that. And also $500 to follow up with our anti-solicitation ordinance. Uh, I'd like to uh, use the other part of my discretionary funds for stickers for our businesses to say that they are not going to allow solicitation at or around their business. Um, and um, I, I'm not sure of the cost, but I'm pretty sure that uh, it's pretty close to what the uh, ordinance, or I'm sorry, the uh, what's left of my uh, discretionary funds to go towards those stickers. That's it. Okay, thank you. Is there a motion? motion to to thank you. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. 
Okay, roll call yeah. vote, please. I was hoping somebody was going to second that. Vice Mayor <laughs> Powers? Aye. Council Member Singleton? Aye. Council Member Shelton? Aye. Council Member Cruz? Aye. Mayor Payne? Aye. Motion passed unanimously, and thank you for thank that. Thank you. Okay, next item. Under the Finance Department, subject is fiscal year 2011-2012 pre-audit budget update. Okay, uh, good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the City Council. My pleasure to present this report to you this evening. Uh, the City has recently completed the pre-audit financial reporting analysis for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2012. And as we've done in prior years, we bring this, this pre-audit report to the City Council before we finalize the audit numbers. But unless something significant changes, we believe this is where the City will end its last fiscal year, of June 30th, 2012. And this is based on information from the City's um, audit firm, Mason Associates. I just want to do some a few highlights for the City Council. One of the things we always look at when we, do, when we do these reports is the General Fund and the Culture and Recreation Fund because they fund a majority of our, our operations. So if you look at the General Fund, the revenues in the General Fund last year, we ended about $297,000 under budget. But there's a few things that kind of skew those numbers. First of all, um, a big chunk of that, 241000 of that, was simply from CDBG funds that we've not received yet because we've not spent the fund. It's a reimbursement-based allocation. So we will receive those revenues. It'll just be once we spend the funds. And the other, the other amount is $50,000 for, again, reimbursable amounts that we will receive, but you can't report it um, if you don't receive it within 60, day, 60 days after the end of the fiscal year. So those revenues will show up um, in the next fiscal year. So if you take those out, the city was really, really close to the actual budgeted amount. We're under budget by approximately $5,000. So we came in very close to what we had budgeted. Um, and the Culture and Recreation Fund actually came in about $56,000 above or higher than budgeted, which is for the revenue side of things. So that's, that's good news. Um, on the expenditure side of the general fund, we came in significantly under budget, almost a million dollars under budget, $925,000. Um, but again, a lot of this is just relating to timing. There were some large projects, including the CDBG projects that were budgeted that we didn't do last year. Uh, also, the police firing range project out at the wastewater treatment plant, that was a large project that had money allocated that we didn't spend that we've now we've got in the current year budget and we're doing design work, but that's money that wasn't spent, so that's significant savings. Um, so those two, and then there's also encumbrances where we entered into to, the contracts or agreements, but we didn't actually spend the money, and so those monies just get kind of carried over to the next year. So if you take out all of the timing um, issues and the, the financing, we actually came in under budget by about $115,000. So that's the savings we incurred in the general fund, which is good news. On the culture and recreation side, um, we came in slightly under budget by about uh, $7,000. But if you take some of the encumbrances and the carryovers and things, some of the timing issues, we actually finished over budget by just uh, slightly over $18,000. Um, if you look at the transfers, transfers in, transfers out from the general fund, that also has, a, has an impact on, on where we end up. The transfer out from the general fund to the culture and recreation fund was less than we anticipated. Um, originally, we estimated that the culture and recreation fund would need a transfer of about $49,000 from the general fund. Because the culture and recreation fund finished higher in revenues, it, we didn't need to transfer as much money from the general fund. So that saved the general fund um, uh, some money in the amount of uh, about $28,000 from the general fund. Overall, transfers in and out had a positive impact on the general fund in the amount of $44,000. And the uh, impact to the uh, Culture Recreation Fund uh, resulted in a decrease by about $30,000. So if you take all of that into account, the actual amounts compared to the budget amount, the general fund ending fund balance is estimated to be uh, more than budget by approximately $154,000. So that's what we finished, what we will finish at the end of that fiscal year, more than what we, what we originally budgeted by $154,000. And the Culture and Recreation Fund ending fund balance is estimated to be more than budget by approximately $8,000. So both of those key significant funds finished a little bit better off than what we had 
anticipated. And for the general fund, it's the first year the city's finished in the black um, since 2007, 2008. Wow. So that's that's good news mm -hmm. that uh, we're still not totally out of the woods. We were able to balance city's budget and um, and and make some headway there. Um, I don't want to spend a lot of time going through some of the other funds, but I will highlight a few significant things because um, the report does highlight some of the major revenue sources for the city um, as well as some of the expenditures on the revenue side. Um, property taxes continue to go down. We were actually down by about $60,000 less than what we budgeted, but sales tax is a little bit higher than what we had, that what we had budgeted. Um, one of the areas that continues to, to exceed expectations is Measure R. We exceeded budget in Measure R by, um, let's see, I believe we came in at about a little over $900,000 and we budgeted for about $860,000. We came in a little over $40,000 more than what we had budgeted. Um, investment earnings continue to be a a troubled spot for the city overall in 2011, 2012. The uh, overall investment earnings was 0.83%, which continues to, to go down um, every year. So we, we are a little bit less than what we anticipated. And fortunately, interest rates remain low, and we don't ex expect a big turnaround in that one. So that does have an impact uh, on the city's financial outlook. Um, expenditures, I've already highlighted most of the the big ones that you can look through here and, and, and kind of see that we've done a good job managing our expenditure side. Each of the departments take very seriously the financial condition of the city and where we can, we get savings and we give that money back to the general fund, to the fund balance um, through managing our costs. We've had some, um, some cost savings on the personnel side as well as on the capital side and the operating and, and maintenance side of things where we can, we look for ways and opportunities to save money and all the departments have taken that responsibility very seriously and done a great job so that we can put some money back um, so we can, we can um, continue to do well as a city from a financial standpoint. Um, there were no other major significant changes in any of the funds, nothing that uh, causes uh, city staff or the, should cause the council any concern. Things were pretty close to what we had projected when we brought this budget to the council back in the spring. Um, there were some minor fluctuations here and there, um, but most of it is, is good news for the city. So we're continuing to monitor <laughs> where we are and we'll be bringing back first quarter update for the city council next month. So from from July 1 through the end of September, kind of where, where we're looking at the current fiscal year, and then we'll bring back the final audit to the council also uh, uh, later once we have the numbers finalized, but this is kind of at least a preview for the city council. Um, the other thing is um, once we do bring back that final audit, we'll be able to make some recommendations to the council on this $154,000, some, some ideas and things that we want to put that money um, towards uh, based on some recommendations that, that we have for the council to consider. So expect that uh, within the next couple months we'll be able to bring that back to the council. But that uh, essentially concludes my report. This is an information um, item for the city council. It doesn't require any action, um, but I'm happy to answer would any questions that the city council has. Would you talk about our reserves as well? <laughs> yes. Um, Reserves continue to be um, funded according to the reserve policy in excess of what we have in the reserve reserve policy. Um, I don't have the ending fund balance on my on my notes um, here, but we are we are close to eight million dollars in reserves. I think we we're in the high high sevens, if I remember right. Don, Donna, do you have any any fund balance for general funds? I think the important thing is that we have good reserves and I don't need to know the exact yeah. amount. We, we have very solid reserves and as noted, you know, in prior years we had taken out um, some money from our reserves to help balance the budget, give us enough time to, to make things balance and that's essentially what we use the reserves for to give us some time to balance things and now that we've, we've done the balancing, um, we're, we're glad that we had those reserves available for us. And that's for some of the cities that have gotten themselves into trouble. They didn't have the reserves 
things tanked, and then they were immediately down to, to nothing and forced to declare bankruptcy or other things. We were able to ride that cushion a little bit, get ourselves kind of right the ship, and then keep on keep on moving. So we're still not back up to the reserve level we were before the, the economy hit, but we didn't dip into those reserves nearly as much as some other cities did, and we'll be able to build it back up slowly, hopefully over the next um, several years. Okay, thank you. I think this should be really reassuring to the citizens of Galt to uh, have these periodic updates to the budget so there's no big surprises where you read the newspaper the next day and say the city of Galt has filed bankruptcy or something. So I think uh, we should all feel really good about the situation and the reporting and the monitoring is so important that we, we know where we are from day to day. Council, do you have any discussion or comments on the report? No. If not, it's just for information, so we will go to the next item. Okay, under Public Works Department, subject, Capital Improvement Program, status update, July to September 30th, 2012. Madam Mayor and Council Members, uh, this is a quarterly update that we'll be bringing to you. Uh, we're reporting on the first quarter, and there is no action required tonight other than to uh, receive the report. Um, in the first quarter of the fiscal year, which would be July through September, uh, pleased to report that we actually completed and closed out uh, seven projects. Uh, I'll just read them quickly into the record. The parking lot restoration in the market area, uh, Littleton Center floor renovation, uh, the Walker Park uh, bleachers, uh, phases 1A and 1B were completed. Uh, Carillion Boulevard median landscaping renovation was completed in several phases with some volunteer help. Uh, there was a market restroom fire damage repair that wasn't actually part of the budget, but uh, is a capital item that we were able to address. It's hard to plan for fire, so it wasn't in the actual CIP for the city. Uh, Dead Man Gulch and Carillion Flashing Crosswalk uh, was completed, and also uh, our pavement rehabilitation program for 2012, which included the Elm Avenue overlay and the slurry seals uh, uh, were substantively completed. We're still doing some punch list work on the slurry seal project. Also during the quarter, we had three additional projects that are in ongoing construction. As you heard, the Central Galt Interchange is nearing completion and will likely be reported completed our next quarterly report. Uh, the Golden Heights uh, Water Treatment Plan Expansion, uh, Phase 3, is underway. And uh, uh, the, also the Live Oak Pump Station and Forest Main Project has recently gotten started. And uh, if we can get the contractor on the job, we should see some uh, earth moving going on here in the near future. Uh, there in addition are 12 projects that are in the uh, pre-construction phase. That could be include everything from preliminary design, uh, environmental clearances, uh, through final design, and uh, uh, railroad quiet zone is on that list, corporation yard improvements, uh, regional law enforcement training center uh, uh, improvements, the uh, 4th Street uh, parking lot and open space project, uh, which will probably be done in conjunction with the C Street Central Galt Complete Streets project. Um, those are out in the design phase. Marengo Road pedestrian path from Elk Hills to Mom Drive. Twin Cities Interim widening and roundabouts on Highway 99. It's actually two separate projects that we're going to try to pair up and get some economies of scale on. A cost road water treatment plant upgrade are in the design phase. Uh, water meter retrofit program will be coming soon to a neighborhood near you. Uh, we'll be presenting uh, recommendations of uh, 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 relative to an RFP and resulting uh, award of contracts that will follow will come to you over the next few months. Uh, <clears throat> wastewater treatment plant facilities plan uh, is underway and we'll be talking about a, a, on the next item uh, a task order related to that and a fiber optic line uh, to enhance uh, uh, communications capabilities for the city between uh, City Hall uh, uh, corporate guard area uh, down to the municipal, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, connecting the, the police department to the downtown uh, uh, interconnecting network. That will actually uh, have the potential to develop a uh, uh, much higher speed uh, data connection for the departments that are using uh, both email systems as well as any of our databases that are centrally connected. Uh, and finally, uh, an annual lift station rehabilitation project. Uh, we have funds put in for annual as needs present themselves, and we're in the process of identifying a program and uh, designing some upgrades for this project, and we'll present those recommendations when we uh, have a contract recommendation. Right. Council, any comments or questions? 
on the report. No, thank you. I would just say that uh, we are moving forward again. Well, if I may, uh, this is your five-year CIP outlook that was adopted as part of the budget, and it's uh, fairly aggressive for a, a city our size. And I uh, will just reiterate a comment I've made in private to some of you that uh, looking at what you're investing in for the city's future is one of the things that attracted me to apply for the position. So uh, I think we're we're being prudent with our money uh, and trying not to spend money that we don't have. At the same time, we're investing in our community's future. Very good. Thank you. Okay, next item. Under Public Works Department, approval of amendment number one to task order number one of the master agreement with West Yost Associates for engineering services related to the wastewater treatment plant facilities master plan project. Madam Mayor, this item uh, is requesting uh, that the council adopt a resolution that does two things. One, that authorizes the city manager to execute amendment number one in an amount of $61,700 uh, for added services to our contract with West Yost, and two, that uh, uh, offsetting uh, appropriations be made in that same amount uh, uh, split between the uh, wastewater fund and the um, uh, our, our capital improvement uh, uh, growth fund. Um, these are to continue studies for our next update to the um, uh, wastewater treatment plant facilities. As you know, you've invested a great deal of money over the last five years in a newly upgraded plant, but that came with a five-year permit that uh, expires or must be renewed in 2015. And with that permit came a mandate that additional um, uh, treatment facilities be upgraded as part of obtaining and must be in place by that 2015 permit. So uh, we entered into a contract back in February with West Yost uh, for almost $700,000 to do a comprehensive review and evaluation, both of the needs relative to arsenic, uh, enhanced arsenic treatment and dealing with nitrates at the plant, and also to look at incremental um, improvements that will be needed to build out our master plan over the next 20 years for the general plan for the city, I should say. So this is to identify what, what those facility needs are, uh, to identify any environmental processes that we need to follow, to uh, uh, preliminarily develop some cost estimates uh, so that we can do budget planning as we look forward, um, and uh, finally to assure that we are uh, under, under construction uh, within the next 18 months to meet that 2015 deadline. Uh, initially, just to address the two known deficiencies, uh, uh, I say known deficiencies, but they identified additional enhancements that would be required by 2015. The preliminary estimate was that we're talking about approximately another $7.5 million uh, in upgrades to the new tertiary plant that was built. Uh, that said, uh, the rate adjustments that were put in place to fund the original plant upgrades contemplated this next step, and as we continue uh, to, to incorporate that in our rates that uh, we already actually have that first amount of money in place. But um, the item tonight is to approve, as we've been going through the preliminary studies, um, we have identified some things that were not included in the original task list, particularly in looking at uh, getting initial consultations from our notice of preparation on our environmental documents that some of the state and federal agencies have indicated there are things they want to see addressed as part of our environmental document. Uh, that's going to require some studies and other things. There are actually six items, uh, specific tasks that make up the, uh, the proposed uh, funding amount of $61,700. Uh, we can go through those if you'd like us to individually, uh, but we do have in your staff report noted how those are broken out and what those tasks are. Um, and with that, I'll just stop and let you ask specific questions. Um, and Mark Clarkson is here in the audience uh, to answer any technical questions you may have as well. Council, questions? No. I do have one. Uh, talking about the um, dissolved oxygen, DO, it says it has occasional low DO conditions, which was unexpected. That always bothers me when we have something that's unexpected. Well, um, let me start here, and Mark may have to save me from myself here if I get too far astray. But uh, uh, when we're dealing with um, uh, treated effluent, tertiary treated effluent that is now uh, part of a year-round permit to discharge um, to ultimately uh, the uh, consume this river is the ultimate outfall point, uh, and then on to the delta. Um, one of the things that you worry about is if you 
uh, don't have fully treated effluent that it can continue to have a biological oxygen demand and cause dissolved oxygen levels to drop in the receiving body. In this case, uh, you don't know uh, what you're going to have until you go out and start monitoring. So we, as part of our initial monitoring to determine if there are any concerns, we noted that the receiving water did have low dissolved oxygen downstream of the plant. That immediately, immediately raised some alarm flags. So our consultants did additional studies, uh, both of our uh, effluent before it reached the receiving water and of the upstream water condition. We found that our effluent was actually higher condition, uh, better condition than the receiving water. And when they tested upstream, they found out that we were actually improving the dissolved oxygen with our effluent. And so uh, we do not believe that our, our, our plant is the smoking gun, but we have to do further studies to demonstrate that we are not having a negative impact. And if I haven't quite stated that correctly, Mark, you can uh, <laughs> give me additional technical details. I'm still getting my arms around all of this. That was good. As long as the outcome was good, it looks like we're, we're doing okay with our part of it, right? Uh, we believe so. Okay. Um, I had another question, unless the council members wanted to jump in. Sure. Um, the other thing, assessment of cum cumulative impacts of groundwater use. Um, reading in there, it says, the city's EIR for the general plan does not provide any detail regarding the projected effects of central and southern Sacramento County groundwater use on the consumers river flows. How, how is that going to affect golf? It seems like we don't have any control over those things. As part of the initial notice of preparation, um, the uh, National Marine Fisheries Service uh, has federal authority over endangered, uh, federally listed endangered species, and the Cosumnes River does have uh, a steelhead run that is a listed threatened species. So when they see a general plan uh, for a wastewater treatment plant uh, uh, study going on, they immediately ask, well, where's the water coming from? And uh, since we're 100% relying on groundwater, uh, and the Cosumnes River in part is part of the uh, recharge of the aquifer that we're dependent on here in the city, um, they initially raised concerns that, well, if we're now going to be treating more water as part of our ultimate build out of the general plan, that, that raises concerns, well, is that going to have a negative impact on the protected status of the fisheries and the consumers? Uh, we do not believe that this is, a, while we think it's a little bit of a stretch, that the, you know, our wastewater effluent is going to somehow cause harm to the upstream Katsumnas River. Uh, they do have the right to ask the question. We're hoping that we can uh, provide some minimal study um, and uh, look at some other studies that have been done as part of this task uh, to demonstrate that there is not a direct nexus or a concern that would warrant formal biological opinions, which can take years and, and, and tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, so we're hoping to keep it at an informal consultation level by giving them some initial information that they can then sort of check the box and uh, say that we do not believe there will be a significant impact. Okay. Because we all know the fines that can be levied on the city, so uh, it's important to, to do these things to protect yeah, ourselves. We're, in essence, these, these six areas are things that we feel will put us in a better position when we file our final environmental document to withstand the, the scrutiny, particularly by the state and federal agencies. Okay. Thank you. We have two items under consideration. Can we take them uh, together, or do they need to be taken separately? I need to take them together. Would you read those recommended actions, please? One is to adopt a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute amendment number one to task order number one of the master task order agreement for consulting services with West Yost Associates in the amount of $61,700 for the wastewater treatment plant facilities plan, and to appropriate $61,700 from wastewater funds 007 for $29,000 and 014 for $32,700 fund balances for the work defined in Amendment Number One to Task Order Number One of the Master Task Order Agreement for the Wastewater Treatment Plant Facilities Plan. Thank you. Uh, you've heard the recommended action. Are there any comments or discussion? Any further? Okay, thank you. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. A second. Roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Powers? Aye. Councilmember Singleton? Aye. Councilmember Shelton? Aye. Councilmember Cruz? 
Aye. Mayor Payne. Aye. Motion passed unanimously, and thank you for the explanations as well. Okay, where are we now? At this point, uh, we have no communication, right? No. So we are going to adjourn from the regular council meeting and go to the successor agency to the former redevelopment agency. Uh, roll call. Board members Powers. Here. Singleton. Here. Shelton. Here. Cruz. Present. Payne. Present. Um, is there any public comment? You have no speaker sheet? No. Okay. Information consent agenda. There isn't any. There isn't any. Departmental. Item A, subject, minutes of the regular meeting of October 2nd, and the recommended action is to accept the minutes as submitted. Move to approve. No. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Roll call vote, please. Board Member Powers? Aye. Singleton? Aye. Shelton? Aye. Cruz? Aye. And Payne? Aye. Motion passed unanimously. Next. Subject, loan agreement between the City of Galt and the successor agency of the Galt Redevelopment Agency. Okay, Madam Mayor, members of the City Council, um, as we work through the process with AB 1484 and the dissolution of redevelopment, we keep learning new things and requirements by the Department of Finance. And so um, as we've gone through this, there have been several agreements that we brought back previously to the City Council, which I'll go over in a second. Um, we got, got appropriation authorization to basically loan and front some uh, money from the general fund in order to pay for auditing services, administrative services, uh, and then be able to get that money reimbursed later through, through the process. Uh, we're now finding that uh, the UF really requires and wants a formal loan agreement in place between the successor agency and the city, and so that's what we're bringing to you this evening. Uh, the, the item was approved by the city council on consent earlier this evening. This is the item for the successor agency. I'll just go through with you really quickly what the, uh, there are three different professional services that were previously approved. The first is with uh, firm RSG, and they provided support for us in analyzing and reviewing the recognized obligation payment schedules and working with the Department of Finance. And really, they, they have provided services for a lot of cities throughout the state dealing with this, so their expertise has really been invaluable to the city, making sure that we're doing things in the right way and making sure that we get the, whatever revenue is owed to the city. That contract was in the amount of $15,000. The next one was a, a small amount in the amount of $1,900, $50 for a report to the oversight board on the status of the bond proceeds that were issued by the city back in 2011. There was a, a presentation made about um, why it was in both the cities as well as all the taxing entities' best interest to go ahead and proceed with the allocation expenditure of those bond proceeds. And so that was a, uh, a task that we we um, asked our consultants to provide. The final one is auditing services. When there's an item on just after this one for Mason Associates to provide the due diligence review that was required by the Department of Finance. Um, cost of those services in the amount of $6,157. Um, as previously noted, successor agency did not have any funds available um, for these services, so the city agreed to loan the successor agency the requested, requested amounts in order to, to ensure compliance with AB 1484. And uh, so the recommendation this evening is that the successor agency adopt a resolution approving a loan from the city to the successor agency to fund these various consulting services relating to the dissolution of the redevelopment agency in amount not to exceed $20,907. Be happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions? If not, I would entertain a motion, please. Motion to approve as submitted. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. second. We'll call vote. Please. Board Member Powers? Aye. Singleton? Aye. Shelton? Aye. Cruz? Aye. Payne? Aye. Motion passed unanimously. Next item, please. Subject, independent accountant's report relating to due diligence review required per Health and Safety Code Section 34179.5. Okay, so this is the item that I just mentioned, the due diligence review that is required uh, according to AB uh, 1484. We contracted with 
Mays and Associates back in September once the Department of Finance issued their guidelines, which was late in coming, but they've been working very diligently to complete that review and, and assessment. Um, the report that's presented to the City Council tonight is actually in draft form. The City Council is not asked to adopt this, this report, but to rather direct staff to finalize the report and submit that report to the Oversight Board. It is the Oversight Board that will conduct the public hearing. There's actually two public meetings required. One will be on October 25th, next one will be on November 8th. So what we're asking the Council to do tonight is to direct staff, um, and it's a little bit different than what's listed on your staff report. What's listed on your staff report is direct staff to submit the report to the Oversight Board county auditor controller, state controller, and department of finance and post it to the city's website and take other actions as required. What we're requesting that you do, because the report is, is, not, is still in draft form, is that the um, oversight or that the successor agency directs staff to finalize the report and submit the report to the oversight board. Um, we're still working with our consultants, with the department of finance to figure out there's some, some questions that were asked there that uh, could be framed in different ways. So we think the bottom line of what we're presenting to the council is not going to change, which is that we're not going to have to um, remit any funds back to the state or to the county for distribution of the taxing entities, but how some of those things might be reported or the language used may, may change slightly between now and when we present to the oversight board, but we don't believe there will be any material changes to that, so we're getting, we want some direction. We'd like the council to authorize or to give direction to staff to finalize the report and substantially the form that's presented tonight and then uh, submit that to the oversight board. Um, Mays and Associates is here uh, this evening. I'd, I'd like Catherine to come forward and maybe present some of these findings to the city council just to give you a brief overview of what's included in here and you can ask any, any questions um, of Catherine. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Mayor and uh, City Council members. My name is Catherine Yuan. I am the engagement partner for the City of Gulf Audit. Uh, tonight, I would like to um, present to you the due diligence review report uh, for the low and moderate income housing fund portion. Uh, some background information. In 2011, the uh, state of California passed uh, Assembly Bill 126, which abolished the redevelopment agencies. And in June 2012, Assembly Bill 1484 was passed, which made technical and substantive amendments to AB 126. Under the Assembly Bill 1484, a due diligence review is required. And what the review actually does is that um, it requires a, an, a licensed accountant to review transactions and assets of the Bsoft redevelopment agency with the end goal in mind if there, um, to see if there are any available cash distributing to other taxing entities. A timeline for the due diligence review report for the low and moderate income housing fund portion was due October 1st of uh, 2012. All other funds, the review will be due December 15, 2012. Um, the DOF has released the um, guidelines for the due diligence review in late August, and as Jason has mentioned, and that was why that um, DOF has acknowledged that, um, that they advise the cities to try their best to meet the deadline, but there's no penalties involved if the deadlines are not met. Um, I will be happy to go over the details of the report with you if you like. Um, all the procedures are listed on the report and our results followed. Um, I would like to point out that there were no findings. And also, um, the end result was that there was no available cash assets to be remitted to the county for disbursement to taxing agencies from the low and moderate income housing fund. And I, at this point, I would like to answer any questions that you will have. Are there any questions from council members? No, no, thank you. No. I do have one. Okay. Under suggested procedures, it says, uh, item number 11, management's refusal to sign the representation letter should be noted in the AUP report as required by attestation standards. 
doesn't sound good. Would you explain that, please? Oh, sure. Um, it is very common that when we perform um, agreed upon procedures or audit, we ask management to sign a representation letter uh, stating that they have disclosed all the facts to us. There's no um, non-compliance issue that they didn't tell us, stuff like that. And in this particular review procedures, um, DOF was very adamant about um, this particular representation. So if we did not get such letter from the city, we would have to note it here that we didn't, but we did get it okay. from the city. Okay. Any questions? Uh, thank you. You're welcome. So the recommended action on this is? Would you like me to, since I did modify the recommendations slightly, yeah. um, I'd be happy to reread that to the city council. Uh, let me just so the recommendation would be that the successor agency review the due diligence review and direct staff to finalize the report and submit the report to the oversight board, county auditor controller, state controller, and department of finance and post it to the city's website and take other actions as required. Okay. So you've heard the recommended action. Is there a motion to that effect? Motion to authorize as uh, submitted and changes that the city manager recommended. Second. Okay. Is there any other discussion? If not, I will call for the vote. Board members Powers? Aye. Singleton? Aye. Shelton? Aye. Cruz? Aye. Kane? Aye. Motion passed unanimously. So, what's the next item? We are going to adjourn from this agency and uh, readjourn to the or adjourn to the Galt Habitation Foundation. Mm -hmm. Roll call, please. Board members Powers? Here. Singleton? Here. Shelton? Here. Cruz? Present. Kane? Present. Uh, public comment? I have none. We have no sheet. Information consent agenda? None. Departmental? Uh, item A, subject, minutes of the meeting of March 6, 2012, when the recommended action is to set, accept the minutes as submitted. Is there a motion to accept the minutes? Move to accept. We have a motion. Is there a second? And a second. Roll call vote, please. Board members Powers? Aye. Singleton? Aye. Shelton? Aye. Cruz? Aye. Kane? Aye. Motion passed unanimously. Next item. Subject, sem semi-annual meeting of the Galt Habitat Foundation. I have a new mayor and council members. I'm going to handle this report. Thank you. Um, as you may recall, when you adopted the bylaws for the Gulf Habitat Foundation back in uh, March of this year, it required that the foundation hold two meetings a year. So this is the second meeting of the year. Um, by way of just a quick background, the city purchased 70 acres uh, north of the Gulf Wastewater Treatment Plant back in 2007 so that the property could be used for Swainson and Talk uh, habitat preserve. Uh, then in 2011, the City Council approved a management plan for the use of that property, uh, directed that we move forward with the formation of this entity, the Gold Habitat Foundation, to uh, monitor the use of that property. And we also entered into a 10-year livestock grazing lease, um, which is a integral part of the use of that property for Swainson Talk mitigation, the grazing has to occur to keep the grass low enough so that the uh, hawks can actually forage on that property. Uh, the, current, uh, the current status of the, the foundation is we have uh, finally completed all of the administrative tasks necessary to form the foundation. It took uh, well over a year for us to kind of weave our way through the um, federal and state uh, process to receive first the IRS approval uh, for the foundation to be a tax-exempt uh, corporation, which was received in July. Uh, we submitted a letter to the Attorney General registering the foundation as a charitable trust also at the end of July. We submitted the, a request to the State Franchise Tax Board for tax-exempt status back in August. 
and we received a letter granting that status at about five o'clock today. <laughs> so we uh, so we're done with the administrative uh, process. Um, I just briefly talked to you about the grazing lease, which is about to enter its second year of operation, and uh, the cattle will uh, uh, be re released to the property in early November this year. We have to wait for the grass to be high enough so that there's uh, um, a purpose in having the cattle out there, and the, uh, the uh, lessee has indicated that they are prepared to uh, have the cattle on the property in November. And another requirement is that an annual inspection of the property uh, be conducted and uh, the Community Development Department uh, has uh, completed that, uh, that inspection of the property. They did not find any, uh, any items of significance. Things they're looking for are erosion, fire hazard, uh, fencing that is down, litter on the property. Um, they are going to prepare a written report and present it to the City Council at an up, upcoming meeting. A uh, bio, biological report is required every other year on the property and that uh, survey will occur in 2013. In the next couple of months, uh, community development will go through the process of issuing an RFP to hire a biologist to do that uh, survey uh, probably in the spring of 2013. And then the annual report and the biological survey are wrapped into a composite report that goes to the Department of Fish and Game um, by the end of December in 2013. So that composite report will uh, most likely come back uh, to the foundation a year from now at your next September meeting, September 2013, for approval. And once we get the foundation's approval, uh, that report will be submitted to the uh, Department of Fish and Game. Um, just by way of summary on the mitigation credit balance, we started with 70 acres. We have used 62 and a half acres for swings and talk mitigation. So we have about seven and a half acres remaining mitigation credits that we can use for, for future city projects. Um, as far as the finances of the uh, foundation, um, $15,000 were budgeted um, this year. We've also received two years of grazing leases, which is $4,200, which gives us uh, uh, nine, over $1,900,000 of operating funds, which we believe are going to uh, be more than sufficient to cover the cost of a biologist and the, uh, the administrative cost of doing such things as filing tax returns and uh, hope not to have to uh, request any further money for the operation of the foundation within the, next, uh, within the next year. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions you may uh, have. The, uh, the item uh, before you is to uh, receive the staff report and then provide any, any direction deemed appropriate. Yeah, I do. Is going to ask if this is not the right area. Correct me if I'm wrong. I just yeah. thought about this now. Did you do RFPs for the um, leasing of this land? Wasn't there kind of an issue last year? And is this the one? That's a different we're... item. Okay. Good. Yeah, that was right. for the farming lease. I think you're talking about. Yeah. This is for the, the grazing lease. Yeah. Can you share though who we are leasing the land to, or the cows to come out on? It's uh, being leased to uh, uh, to Mr. Palandini. Okay. And you know, one of the things that we looked at uh, when we undertook this lease is that there's some additional functions that, that are required, such as uh, maintaining uh, the fencing, uh, working with us to ensure that the cattle on, are on the property at the appropriate uh, point in time. And the main function here, again, is not to make money, but it's to ensure that we can comply with the management plan and so uh, we wanted to ensure that whoever we leased the property with recognized that that was the priority pr primary purpose of the lease and would uh, cooperate with us in the management of the property. And so far, it's been a, uh, a very good relationship. Well, and one of, the, one of the big reasons we went with him is because in order to access that property from our property, um, there's, a, there's a creek. And so we would have had to construct some type of bridge 
um, in order to to get that to get there. Mr. Pellandini owns a property adjacent to, to our property right on the other side, so he can move his cattle from his property onto our property. So it saved us um, about seventy thousand dollars by not having to build that uh, that bridge structure. So it made sense from a lot of different yes. perspectives. Okay, this is to receive the report. Do we need a motion to receive it, or just a consensus? Um, no, there's there's no motion okay. uh, required in order to receive the report. Mm -hmm. Just happy to respond to any questions the uh, board may have. And uh, there's no direction from the no. from the board on this. So I think we're ready to adjourn from the Golf Habitat Foundation and get back to the regular <coughs> city council. And we will go to the city clerk's report. Okay, city clerk's report. First item is the Galt Area Historical Society purchase of historical markers. The Historical Society uh, recently contacted the city requesting four historical markers for sites of early businesses. The businesses chosen are Brewster's, Galt's First General Store, the Bank of Galt, the Peck Building on the southeast corner of 4th and C Street, the Escheleta Ballroom, the ballroom of the early 20s and the Grange Hall Galt First Movie Theater. They are asking for an appropriation of $900 to the community promotion account in the city council budget. Any questions on this item? And let's see, the recommended action is authorize an expenditure of $900 for the purchase of four historical location plaques, including the necessary appropriation to the council community promotion fund. Is there a motion to that? Thank you, Vice Mayor. Do we have a motion? Second? Yes, second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Powers? Aye. Council Member Singleton? Aye. Council Member Shelton? Aye. Council Member Cruz? Aye. Mayor Payne? Aye. Motion passed unanimously. Were there any other? Next item is Commission Committee appointment. Oh. There is one vacancy to be filled by Council Member Shelton for the Galt Youth Committee. Uh, the person appointed tonight will have to reapply in December as the term expires. I have one letter of interest. And that name is? Yes. Otto Kafka? Yes. Otto, would you like to come and say, if you've been so patient sitting through all we this. We appreciate and I, that. I apologize. I should have moved you forward, but uh, I'm I sure you found this meeting very interesting. I thought about that, but then I said, you know, he's, he's yeah, stepping forward as a volunteer. Yeah. He needs to Stop enlighten that. himself. Thank you very much. Go All right. Well, I did enjoy the meeting, yeah. by the way. <laughs> and uh, my name is Otto Kafka. A little about me. I lived here in Galt for 22 years, so I am a Galtonian. Also, uh, moving forward in my education, I'm going to college at Delta College community and I'll be transferring next year to UOP right next door at the University of Pacific. Um, and I'm happy to assist with the Galt youth community. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate your interest. Thanks. Okay, so I think it's up to you, Councilman Shelton. That's my motion to appoint him. Thank we already you. shook hands on it earlier, but oh, okay. officially. <laughs> we did have a motion, and so is there a second? Second. Well, I don't know if it's your point. Okay. Yeah. We, just, we just like to do motions just <laughs> for the practice, so we're good, right? Welcome, Otto. Just in time for the Halloween event, the uh, crafting with Santa. We're going to put you to work. <laughs> It'll be fun. Thank you so much. And the meeting is gone. Okay, next comments by staff. <coughs> I have no comments. I don't think there's any comments. No no comments? No comments. Dan? <laughs> mm -hmm. Next comments by city council members and future agenda items. Vice Mayor Powell. Um, well, I guess I already made my one report about the uh, interchange yeah. opening. I'm not good. sure there was, there was anything else. I think that was it. Okay. Councilman Singleton? Nothing? Councilman Shelton? I have one thing. I got an invitation to go to a regional CERT disaster drill. This is something that's planned. We have several people in our community. And I believe it's actually, Chief, you could help me out. It's Elk Grove Galt. Is that what it's called? 
I was, first got a nice little invitation to be there as a representative for, uh, you know, as a council member, and I thought, oh, that'd be great. As time goes on, the chief is smiling. Uh, they, uh, I think, were short or they were uncovering rocks. I'm not sure, but I ended up going as a participant <laughs> as a proctor, and it was a very good learning experience. It was almost like deja vu. You got volunteered. I got volunteered, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure who did that chief <laughs> no but i appreciate being included in that that was very good uh, i was able to since i've been on you know more than three or four uh, natural disasters and incidences to uh, be able to uh, supervise you know and as a proctor sometimes it's a little hard as you you know as you know so but again thank you for the invitation it was very well received and i think that they, they learned a lot so thank you that was all I had. Very good. Councilman Cruz? Actually, I've got things. Okay. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, we just had our unmet transit needs with a SACOG uh, pretty much hosting, and Mr. Winkler was there, myself. And we had one person come and make a comment. We had a couple of, of letters that we read. Mostly it was praising our, our commuter express bus. Uh, Specifically, the friendly and wonderful driver of that bus. Um, so it was a short meeting. There were no uh, transit needs that seemed to be unmet. Um, so that was that was good. It was a good meeting. And compared to previous ones where we've had quite a few people get up and speak, I think that shows that we have made some really good progress. Uh, then also, I want to take this opportunity to compliment one of our staff members, something I love to do. We had a business down on Lincoln Way that complained about the sappy trees on Lincoln Way and how uh, uh, people were walking in the sap and tracking it into his business. And I directed him to Aiden Selby. And I got a call today and said that he was out the very next day and cleaned it up, and he was very appreciative and very happy. So kudos to Aiden Selby and the department. And if there is no further business, we will adjourn the meeting at 8.32. I'm going to uh, go back to closed session. Oh, okay, sorry, we're not adjourned. Oh, yeah. You guys can go, but we've got to go to closed session. <laughs> I wanted I'm to sure. go home. I'm sure he <laughs> well, he had a Yeah, and quickly. Uh, I know. I wanted to say he's a good.